the line. All right. I made the best one win. Lena! Lena, you come on. We already gonna be late. Hush, Willis. You don't know them verses yet? You're not gonna learn them now. <laughs> come on. Like Tate and their little brother, his be acting that way. They still smart enough for daddy's job at the gym. Now, Melina, child, this kind of contest can't everybody win, so you mustn't take it hard if you don't. I'm sure this is going to be a fine and glorious evening, for we'll not only hear the words of our Lord, but we'll be hearing them from the mouths of our young, the future of our great country. All of you young people here in Bethel Springs will be part of that glorious future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Battles. And now let me introduce the organizer of tonight's contest, Jay Bird Kelsey. <clears throat> I uh, have a prize for the winner. So, uh, y'all do your best. All right. I think it's uh, fitting and right that we start with the high honor student and uh, best memorizer in Bethel Springs, Winslow Starnes. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, next, uh, continue where Winslow left off, or uh, select a new chapter and verse. And God saw light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And now it's your turn. This is Alma Fensel, everyone. Ashes to ashes. Ashes to ashes. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Well, everyone knows that was Todd Brewer. <laughs> Very good fact. And next is Elsie Raleigh. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And our new student, Lena Sills. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. My son, if thou wilt hide my, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though our sins be like red. Crimson. They shall be as. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, 
they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Well, Winslow, Lena, you beat said 50 verses and you are beautifully matched. No one could call this anything but a perfect tie if you would like to stop. Now, I know this has been a fine... I want to go on. What? I want to go on. Yeah. <coughs> oh, well, all right. May, may the best one win. appear on the earth. The time of the singing of the birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green fig, and the vine with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Lena? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, Miss Lena, you did real fine. And uh, Winslow did fine, too, even if he didn't win. <laughs> here. You win the prize, Miss Lena. Thank you, Mr. Kelsey. I wish it was just what you wanted, because uh, you deserve... Here, I put him to bed, then you tend to the horses. Come on. Okay. Lena, rewards don't prove you're somebody. When you're somebody inside yourself, you don't have to be told. Well, how do you know when you're somebody? You just know I'm somebody, and I know. And you didn't have to throw Mr. Kelsey's blunder up in his face. It was meant for Winslow Starnes. He can have it. But you had the victory, baby girl. Wasn't that enough?
changes at all. It doesn't have to be stuck in you before you see what it means. Will you hush now? Ben, it's happening again, just like it always does. What's happening like it always does? Nothing, Lena. Probably just some kid playing a prank. Or some tramp scared off just he's fixing to have himself some supper. Ben, they telling us they don't want us here. Who? They saying here in Bethel Springs they ain't got no more use for us than they did back south. We never should have come. Who's saying? We the only colored family in town, Ben. You have already taken a white man's job, and it don't matter if you earned it. And tonight she overstepped herself, just like you always do it. Be quiet. I have been quiet for six years while she was growing up safe in Scatter Creek. And you not telling her what the rest of the world was like, or letting me. There's a time for it, Claudia May. Well, when? Was I not supposed to win? I'm glad you won. You won fair. But did somebody do this because I won? Come on. Papa, I'm too big. Come on, sit down here. I remember when I used to hold you on my lap. <laughs> Your little feet about the size of a mouse, all curly-toed. <laughs> you remember that? Just after your mama died. We sure missed her, didn't we? Nobody done this tonight because you won, Lena. But Claudia said that... I know Claudia said what she thought was true. What is true for her. Papa... Do people want us to leave? No. This is a good town we've come to. You know that. They took us in, the church, the school. This is big, open country with room for everybody. Do you know what Bethel means? It means the house of God, a hallowed spot. But somebody came in here tonight. I know. But maybe somebody young or angry or scared of changes, but one person or two or even ten, they're not a whole town, you know. Well, what can we do? Uh, well, you can go to bed. God. 
for church? Well, we thought we'd uh, skip today, let everybody rest a while. Funny, Papa. Lewis should be right there outside on the porch, wagging his tail, waiting for breakfast. Tell her, Ben. Sometimes you put on things too long. Yeah, not wanting to worry, people. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't have made a strong preacher. I guess the Lord and his wisdom knew it, even though I really wanted badly to serve in that way. Tell her, tell her myself, my way. Whether you like it or not. Get dressed, baby girl. Your stepmama cried last night. She asked to go back to Scatter Creek. No, I won't. Maybe we should go. No, I won't, Papa. And you can't either. You said last night we haven't done anything to be afraid of or ashamed of. And if you believe that, then we have to stay. Bullets there. What happened to him? He was all right yesterday. Did he have a fight? I can't say. He's more like he'd been beat or poisoned or something. Tater. It was Tater, wasn't it? You can't say that, Lena, because you don't know. I do know. I just know. Lena. Something always comes to fill the empty spaces. Something always comes to take the place of what you lose. Miss Chisholm gave me some peach seeds to plant yesterday, and uh, they were wrapped in this. <laughs> September 12, 19 and 10, not a week old. Uh, Miss Chisholm wants you to come help her tomorrow. Ah, ah, ah. She wants to put up her uh, tomatoes for the frost gets them, and she's fixing to clean up for a big dinner she's going to have next Sunday. Yes, sir. Don't forget to go by the schoolhouse and tell your teacher she won't be coming. Hmm? Is Russia going to have a war? I hope not. If we had a war over here, would you fight in it? I don't know. If they took you, it'd be so you could haul manure and lift freight, not so you could kill people. <laughs> you sound like I'd be missing the best part. <laughs> All the same, they had colored soldiers in the Civil War and the Revolution, too. They did? Mm -hmm. Doesn't say that in my history book. I'm talking about now. Well, I'm talking about any time. Killing is wrong. The Lord commandeth, thou shalt not kill. In Exodus, it say an eye for an eye. Wrong just the same. Now, I got cotton sacks patch. Why do I have to make school? Is he scared of everybody? He does everything that crabby old lady says. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Lena, don't mind, Mrs. School. Hold on a minute, Lena. A and what about bullets? Do we have to let people like Tater break into our house, kill our dog, and then try to scare us back to Scatter Creek? Hush! I think I better set you straight about something, Miss Lena. We all work for that crabby old lady, and you've been at your daddy here. You call her that neither. She our boss. Sure, your daddy is scared. You don't know the first thing about what's bothering him, do you? He's thinking about leaving. Do you know why, Miss Magic Mind? No, you don't. You worried about missing a few days out of school like that meant something. When your daddy got a real life and death worry to struggle with. You know what it is? This is it. 
Your dad is a good man. He believes the Lord meant it when he said to love your enemy and turn the other cheek to them that hurt you. What he's struggling with right now in his heart is what he'd do if somebody really tried to hurt us, his family. Got some things arriving over at the freight depot, Haney. I want you and Tater to get yourself down there and deliver them over to my house this afternoon. Now give her a crank. Yes. Whew. I think Ben would realize that you need to be in school. That you could do better than most of your kind. I and mean, an education is good for everyone, even you people. But I guess you sharecroppers are all alike. My daddy don't share crop. He pays Miss Chisholm rent. All you people ever do is think about your crops and working for other people. Then you wonder why you end up working your life away and never getting any further than when you first started out. Get back to work. My daddy said you wanted me. I hope you're smarter than you look. Get in here and quit talking. Now, when we get these here things canned in the kitchen scrub, we're going to clear out the attic. Haven't been up there since Gooch died. Here. Now, get me some water. Well, I'll be. Don't you know nothing? <laughs> You'd think an 80-year-old man would a lot rather pass away politely in his bed instead of galloping down the track to catch a 333 and a 334 with a clothes flying out of his satchel and... It was not Gooch. <laughs> he would have been 90 next year if he had caught it. Buying any other crazy doings. <laughs> I was 27 years younger than he was, you have to remember. And we understood each other very satisfactory. I married him for his land, and he married me for... Malogs. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I cook for a railroad crew. Mmm. Bake 12 pies and 10 dozen rolls a day. <laughs> I still can't help cooking 20 times more food than I can eat. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I eat good, don't I? My folks were dirt poor. We lived in a chicken house one winter. 
I said then, I was never going to be poor again. And now, I got 1,920 acres of land that says, I won't. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mary Tom. I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything, but I would like to talk to you, if I may. Well, you're interrupting my lunch. Take a seat in the bar, okay. Okay. When you finish eating, leave the dishes in the sink and go up to the attic and start straightening up. Sit down, Augustus. <coughs> now. What is it that's so all far important to bring you out here in the middle of the day to disturb my lunch? Well, it's, uh, it's about the church. What about it? Well, we've never had a, a real church here, as you know, Mary Tom. We used to use the Melody Land dance hall till that burned down. Now we use the schoolhouse. And so? So, I was thinking it would be a true blessing if we had a real church here in Bethel Springs. And you want me to give you the money so you can build one? I'm sure God would bless you for it. I'm sure he would. But I ain't giving any of my money to no church. Gooch gave you the money to build a schoolhouse. That's good enough. Besides... I don't go to church. Why should I spend my money on something I never use? I'm not mad, Augustus. You can always ask. I'm having a dinner next Sunday. It's uh, Gooch's and my 30th wedding anniversary. Oh, I would look forward to that. And, and it would give us a chance to talk some more. Well, it'll be right after church. Try not to be late. Yeah. And just what in our nation do you think you're doing? All these yours? Those? I took them out of the bookcases when my kids moved. I needed a place to store my good dishes. But, I mean, do you come up here to read them? We'll start in the far corner. I'm clearing out all of Gucci's stuff and the kids' stuff. Selling the whole lot. Well, they could have come in and got it if they wanted it. A little visit wouldn't kill them. I got grandchildren I haven't even seen. Could I read your books, please, Miss Chisholm? You? Now, what good do you think books would do you? I learn things. The devil you do. Cherubel's love story. Winsome but wicked. That's what my daughter learned. Romance. Romance. Now she's living over a saloon in Milwaukee with a one-eyed butcher. So much for romance. Do you know what my children are doing? They're sitting on the hind legs waiting for me to die. All four of them. Well, they're going to be surprised right down to their socks. I'm going to sell that land and spend it doing the things I want to do. <laughs> Please, Miss Chisholm, I'll take real good care of your books. No. I'll work extra and you won't even have to pay me. No. But why? You don't read them. They're just laying up here going to waste. I don't have to take sass from no little Miss Swellhead. Now, you either do as you're told, 
Or you can start down those steps and keep on right out the front door. That no good Haney and his stupid son Tato were supposed to be bringing my things from the depot. Wonder where they're at. I suppose you want to go home now. Yes, ma'am, before it gets too late. Yeah. I suppose I can do the dishes. If not, you can do them first thing in the morning. Go on home now. Go on. much choice in the matter. I mean that the choice is Miss Chisholm. I said to her the job at the gym belongs to Mr. Haney, but she said the job belongs to who she says it does, and either I take the job or she gives it to somebody else. And I'm telling you, I've been working the gym since before you came, and I intend to keep on. You got that, boy? Yeah, you hear my pastor? Shut up, Nato. Well, you best be telling that to Miss Chisholm. When Miss Chisholm tells me, then I'll know too. And I'm telling you that their job is mine. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Peter. Papa. Baby girl, I was just coming to walk you home. Mr. Haney sounded awful angry. Did he? I don't think he meant anything by it. How'd you and Miss Chisholm get along? I don't know. She wants me tomorrow. Oh. I brought home one of her books. You mean she let you keep a book, or just let you borrow one? I meant I borrowed a book. Did you now? That was nice of her, wasn't it? all of our birds, but I don't. I'm scared of the silly things. Mr. Kelsey at the feed store might know about birds. Well, let's just go see if he does. Come on, get in. Right next to me. He told Ben Sills to bring those boxes. And I'm going to pay him the same money I would have paid the both of you. He's worth it. But, but we're here now. I'm leaving. I've lost enough sleep over you two. I got me a hand now that can work circles around the two of you. And he does what he says he's going to do. So I'm warning you. And I mean both of you. Mend your ways. Or find someplace else to live on this earth. If you weren't so rich, couldn't talk to you like that. Spare me, I don't like Roy 
being out at night like this. It couldn't be helped. We had an emergency at the mill. Nothing I could do about it. Miss Chisholm still needs me, Mr. Dones. But I did my assignment. It's right here. I need my assignments for the rest of the week. Well, you can copy down the assignment off the board, and I'll pick a book report for you. Hey, is this what you're looking for? That's mine. Give it to me, Winslow Starnes. Well, wait a minute. This is the best book I've ever seen. Is it a birthday present or something? Yes. I mean, no. It's, uh, Miss Chisholm found it in her attic. Now give it to me. I have to go to the feed store and then to Miss Chisholm's. Well, um, maybe I can read it when you're done. Ask Miss Chisholm if I can. No. Then I'll ask her myself. Smart of you, Randolph, adding secondhand goods to your dry goods store. Don't do me no harm either. You can get rid of all these things. All I got left is that load of books, and I'll be on my way. Mm. Stones! Forget about them books. They can hold on to them books a little while longer. Much obliged, Mary Tom. Your bird died, Miss Chisholm. But Mr. Kelsey wanted you to have this. Why don't you tell me how you are, Mary Tom? We don't see each other that often. You know how I am, J.B. Same way I've always been for the past 12 years. Mean, crotchety old woman. No one in this town can stand. Uh, that's not true, Mary Tom. Oh, I'm not talking about you, J.B. You're still fool enough to feel about me the way you used to. And you still feel the same way about me, too. I was young and poor. And I did what I wanted to. There's nothing that can be done about it now. It's too late. It's not too late. Emily's been dead for three years. Your husband's been dead for 12. And it's too late. Just let it be, J.B., let it be. Please. I'm, uh, having a dinner Sunday. Would you like to come? I'd be happy to, Mary Tom. Twelve noon. Right after church. For those of you who go to church. Now I got work to do. Think my little birds in heaven. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. It says that. St. Luke, just like that. 
I'm glad. Poor little Gucci bird. My things. Your daddy's here with my things. Ooh, Lee, look at that. Oh, oh. I ordered them to catalog. Diggers I sent there this spring. I'm sending you over to Hawk Hill. Uh, Miss Chisholm, I sure would like to get all that cotton in before we get rain. Could you send somebody else? I'd rather lose some cotton than a sale on that place. Since I sued that fellow west of me over that boundary, there's no telling what he's done. My fences could be down all over. <laughs> well, I can't show a prospective buyer that. <laughs> Lady sure don't take no for an answer, does she? Don't you want to go over to the hot hill place? Oh, I don't mind riding fence. I just sure would miss all y'all if I was way over there. I'm taking Mr. Haney's job again. Copying those poems. She stayed up all night. I know. I saw the light last night. Why, oh. look what you did! I didn't mean it! Uh, Lena! Now you should have moved it off the table before breakfast. Don't you go worrying now, Lena. I'll go with you and help explain to Miss Chisholm. No, Papa, it's all right. I'll go by myself. I'll work extra and I'll pay for the book by myself. Please let me go by myself, Papa. Eat your breakfast, honey. It wasn't your fault. You omitted to tell Miss Chisholm you took that book, didn't you? Oh, Lena. I just wanted to read them, Papa. Books are to read. They'll just ruin up there. She don't care if rats eat them. She's wasteful. She's ignorant and selfish. She happens to own them, Lena. They're hers to do with, not yours. But owning things don't make it right. People own slaves. Still, you did something wrong, Lena. Do you understand that you did? No. You robbed somebody, baby girl. I didn't. I bought the first book back. I would have brought them all back. You robbed me. I trusted you. I would have stood up in court and swore Miss Chisholm lent you books, because I knew you wouldn't take them otherwise. That's how I want to trust you, Lena. I want you to trust me, Papa. I didn't lie to you. You led me to believe a lie. I want so many things, Papa. So much. I know you do, baby girl. But you gotta get them the right way. I want things for you, too. For all of us. 
And I'm tempted sometimes. Lord knows I am. But we'll just have to help each other to hold on. All right? All right. Chisholm wants me to pick up the wire and post for the Hawk Hill place. Well, I'll tell you, I'm planning to be using them posts from wire myself. Well, Mr. Haney, all I know is she told me to get it, and so that's what I'm going to have to do. Well, she must have told you wrong. Or more likely, you just heard wrong. Because I've done the Hawk Hill fences the last three years, and I mean to keep on. Well, since we can't agree on this thing, uh, why don't you go see Miss Chisholm? We're on our way over there now. You're welcome to ride. I got my own mount. Well, then maybe you'd like to go talk to her about it yourself. I can wait. You want to? Sure. I might as well go see her. Bring you got so much time. Want me to saddle up? Go ahead. What if I told her somebody stole her blasted post and wire? I don't think she'd like to hear that. What if I tell her you stole her stuff? I wouldn't like to hear that. You might as well make yourself comfortable. I might be a while. you're doing? I'm seeing if you got Mrs. Chisholm's wire and post. You can't do that. This ain't your place. It's Miss Chisholm's place. And I need to have some facts to tell her. I need to know I'm not being fooled. You stay out of our barn. My pap, he kill you quick as he would a bug. Now, Tater, I don't want to get you all in trouble. If you don't let me see in here, I'm going to have to tell Miss Chisholm that you done sold off all her material. Do we? Baby girl, I'm not hurt. You lay a hand on me. It's none of your business what we don't them post. Come on, Papa. Okay, get in the way. I'm sorry. Decided to stroll on over three hours late, huh? No, we stopped by the Haney's place, Miss Chisholm. Uh, he done sold off your wire and post, ma'am, and, uh... And what? Well, Lena's got something she wants to tell you. I took your books. Book. Two. One at a time. I ruined this one. But I'll pay for it. And if you don't give her the thrashing she deserves, I will. This was the most expensive book in my whole house, and now it's not worth a dime. 
I knew them bug I know Count Haney stole my wire and post. I already ordered new ones and put them in the barn. But I never thought any child of Ben Sills would be stealing from me. Especially the way I've been treating her. Eating at my table, riding my car and all. We're both sorry about what happened, Miss Chisholm. Lena was wrong to take the book, even though it was just stacked away in the attic. And we're both willing to work off the price you'd have got if you were sold. I'll think about it. While you're here, you can polish the silver. Ben, I want you to come in and see what you can do. My piano rolls keep jamming up. say no to that, could I? We have ourselves a deal, and I thank you kindly. When do you want me to be ready? Oh, you'll be ready Sunday, right after church. Good a time as any to start off. Oh, from now on, Claudia's gonna have to help me. Can't have nobody I can't trust in my house. Yes, ma'am. Be ready for what Sunday, Papa? Are you adding eavesdropping to your list of crimes? Well, I'd rather keep it a surprise, but I guess I'll tell you now so you can look forward. Miss Chisholm is going to let you read her books, and Speck she'll even give them all to you after a while. What happened? What did you say to her? I told her how much books mean to you, how hard you try in school. I even told her about the contest. Gradually, she mellowed up. Pop, I can't believe it. Mr. Cook's Voyages, yep. Dickens, Mr. Alger and Fanny Fern. Papa, I'm sorry for all the trouble you took. And I'm sorry for all the trouble I caused. I'm glad you're glad. You really think she'll give them to me? Mm-hmm, I really do. Except it's gonna take her a little while to get used to the idea, but she said she'd let me know. When, Papa? When I get back from Hawk Hill. You said you weren't going. Well, I changed my mind. You mean she said you had to? No, fact, she said I didn't have to. But we both wanted something from each other, so we struck a bargain. Don't worry, you'll be all right. I'll just be gone a few days. I'm just gonna be over yon the back of Medicine Hill near the river. I sure gonna miss you, though. All of you. I wish you hadn't promised just to get the books, Papa. I'm scared. Well, I think books are worth being scared for. I stay scared. Watching you grow up with that good mind, all hungry for learning, nothing to feed it with. I want you to do things, know things, use your talents, pull yourself out. I want you to believe that you can do anything. The world is full of wonders and miracles, Lena. And I wanted those books for a beginning. I go further than Hawk Hill for that. I go around the world. Papa, there's Mr. Haney. Yeah, I saw him. You got a gun, Papa? I got something better. The shield and buckler of the Lord, and so do you, so don't you forget it, you hear? Why don't he leave us alone? He's leaving us alone. But he's not. He's watching us. He scares me. Check the ham and the turkey. Make sure all the Lazy Susans are filled. 
And then go in the dining room and check the table and be sure it's laid out properly. I already checked the table three times, Miss Chisholm. Well, you just spend your time doing as I tell you. I'll worry about any counting that needs to be done. Mighty fine words there, Augustus. Wouldn't be the same town without you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, your wife's not sick, is she, Brother Sills? We missed her singing. Oh, she's over to Miss Chisholm's today, helping out with the dinner she's mm -hmm. having. You're a fine, quiet young fella. I noticed I put you to sleep. What's <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny? Any more books for Miss Chisholm? I was just thinking about young Roy poetry. Sills. You know, he reminds me of I have a poetry book when you ought to read. Shakespeare and a few well, other You know, my, my father... Want me to bring it? He could keep it till he memorized all the good ones. I was the only boy in the family, quite naturally. You sure are a good memorizer. I'm a preacher, too. So are you. Well, he'd take me to church with him every Sunday. Upstairs and get dressed. My guest should be here in a little while. No need for you to go worrying. I should be back in no more than a couple of days, maybe soon. Some extra food, Miss Chisholm asked me to give it to you. Now, Ben, I want you to be careful. Nothing to worry about, but just to keep an eye out for that old coot of a neighbor. Still smarting over that boundary dispute I won when I took him to court. Did you give him that sass? <laughs> Well, uh, don't be much longer. My guests will be here shortly. All right, now, you take care of everything, you yeah? <laughs> Even though Roy is expected to be the head of the family, you take care. Yes, Miss Chisholm. Now, I don't know about Jaybird, but I'm as hungry as a bear. You can start serving the dinner now.
You always were a good cook, Mary Tom. Don't start that again, J.B. I'm not. I'm just saying you're a good cook, which you are. I've been thinking about expanding my business. That's so. I've been thinking about it. Not Mr. Goose Chisholm's sister, not the bank and his wife, not Mr. Starnes and his wife, not one of Miss Chisholm's children, just Mr. J. Bird Kelsey. Just one person, all them tables of food. Reverend Bell and his wife showed up when the dinner was over. Miss Chisholm told them to leave. Oh, I felt so sorry for that crazy, stupid old woman. I know what to do. Can I go borrow a book from Miss Chisholm? You mean go and try to cheer her up? It won't do no good. I could go over and pump the piano and play her piano rolls. All right. Don't be surprised if she turn you down. I just happened to come by, and I thought I might get a book. Leave. 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 But, Miss Chisholm... A book. Can't you even wait till that daddy of yours keeps his promise and mends that fence? You can back out on me, like everybody else does. And there, where'd I be? Out another book, no fences mended. My daddy don't back out on his promises. But I can wait for the book. I really just came by to... I'm sorry about your dinner, Miss Chisholm. Well, for your information, and contrary to gossip Claudia spread, I had a very satisfying dinner. Me and Mr. Kelsey feasted in real high style. If you don't believe me? I believe you, Miss Chisholm. Any better? Big, noisy dinner parties are a pain. 30, 40 people. Who wants to go to that kind of trouble? They gobble it all up and leave. Even Kelsey, that old goat, hasn't eaten this good in years. His wife probably couldn't even boil water. I owed him because of that burn. And then he had to go and get me this thing. And now I still owe him. I can't stand being beholden to anybody. Sure is pretty, though. Gooch used to grow ferns ten times as big. Yeah. You could do everything better, couldn't you, Gooch? Practically ran the whole town. People couldn't do enough for you. Your friends couldn't do enough. Your kids, I couldn't do enough. Oh, Gooch, if you were still here, they sure as wouldn't ignore me like I was dirt. But you're not here. Well, stop gawking. Get home before I throw something at you. I hate to leave you when you seem so... You hate to leave me? Without a bunch of them leftovers I got, you think you can fool me? Well, I got a surprise for you, Miss Greedy Gut. 
I'm not giving you a single handout. Uh -uh. No, I'm eating them all. Every bite. If it takes me a month. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, Lulu. Lulu, Mama didn't mean to step on you. I couldn't ski. And you loved me. You can tell your mama I can clean everything up myself. I'm gonna be late for school. Lena. Found any good poetry books at home yet? Listen, Alma, I can't lend you any books. Why? My father said I couldn't. Oh. I'm not even supposed to talk to you. Why? I don't know. I think Mr. Doan's talked to my father about something. My father says if y'all keep filling up the country out here, you'll have to go to your own schools. Why? I don't know. Because you don't need the same things we do, I guess. Father says you first ones, you're like a wedge. And the more that comes, the more trouble there'll be. And it'd be better if it all stopped right now. before Claudia comes back. You set the table. You better stay back, Mr. Haney. Your, your daddy's going to pay for this. She's, she's taking my horse. She gets whatever she wants. And now it's my horse. Samuel Sills, you come out here and saddle me. Who's that? 
You gonna disgrace your husband like this? You already done that yourself. his horse for the dead he owes her. And he says Papa's to blame. <laughs> trash. That good for nothing trash. Now we know your dad is not home. I got a surprise for y'all. Sit down. Sit down. I was saving it when your daddy come home, but tonight's as good a time as any. Look at that. I want you to stay away from them Haney. Especially Tater. He one got to prove himself. Prove what? Whatever he got to prove. How big, how much better, how much of a man. little, these men, white hats we call them, they'd come riding down through the flats where we lived, looking for somebody they wanted. They used to do that. They'd come down, call a colored man out on his porch at night, just take him off. One time, nobody came out, so the white men started burning houses. My family ran down to the river bottom. And in the morning, when we came back, just for dawn, our house was burnt down with everything in it. But that was the South. It's different here. Lena's like a blight. One day it's not someplace, and then it is. And you know it's going to keep on spreading until it kill off what was growing so good. Papa says that won't happen here in Bethel Springs. After the contest at school, your daddy said he's afraid you didn't know how much he loved you because he's always so busy. He never spent much time with you, tell you things. He said you're going to try to do better. You sure stressed the day out, didn't you? We all better get to bed. Papa be home tomorrow for sure.
gonna come somehow. But to be you, Lena, how wonderful. Uh, uh, Papa, what happened? Tater's horse bolted. His foot got caught in the stirrup. Horse dragged him down from the windmill. I think his leg is broken. His head's banged up. He's been out since... What day is it? Tuesday. Papa, what did he do to you? He rode up to the fence on his daddy's horse. And fired a shot that scared everybody. Him, me. The horse shied out like a hornet. Dragged him all through that brush. Come on, Papa. I gotta get you into the wagon. No, you better get Tate in there first. Papa, he tried to kill you. I can't. I can't touch him. We'll send somebody for him. The good Lord already didn't send somebody. Oh, Lena. I hope I'm not dreaming you. No, Papa. I'm really here. Baby girl, I can't be fixed up none. Yes, you can. No, I can't. But Tater can. So I want you to get him back to his folks. No, I won't. For my sake, baby girl. No reason for you to grieve. This is wonderful that we get to... Say last things to each other. Most folks don't get to, or can't. It's what I held on for, baby girl. So I could tell you how much I love you. And Claudia, and Roy. And to thank you. Oh, you give me. <laughs> no. Why wasn't it Tater instead of you? Where was the shield and buckler of the Lord? I don't know, Lena. I've been wrestling with that all night. And you're gonna have to wrestle with it too. Until you find the answer. <laughs> Papa, I don't wanna live if you can't. I know, honey, it feels that way at first, but... But if you live, then I live, too, right there with you. Now, you bring the wagon close, and I'll try to help you get him in. You went first. I can manage. I know what to do by myself.
His horse is close by. I heard him last night. Find him while I rest a little. Do I have to leave you, Papa? Yes, it's better to. I can't. Can't. Remember, after this, you can do anything. Now go on. Why wouldn't you give up on him? Why couldn't you so I could too? Name of God. Here.
That's it. Come on, son. That's it. All right, wait now. Wait, wait a minute. All right, let's turn your leg around just a little bit. That's it. That's it, son. Okay. There we go, son. You're going to be all right. Tell me how it happened. I just found him. And I'll kill. Well, somebody did this. And if it takes me the rest of my life, they're gonna pay for it. Tell me who it was, Lena. You have to tell me. I can't remember. You can't remember? You're the best memorizer in school. You know the Bible through. What do you mean you can't remember? I can guess who it was. You don't know who it was. You won't ever know. How, John, how can you let the person that did this to your daddy go free? Papa didn't talk about any of that. He just talked about loving us. And how we shouldn't give up on that person. And I didn't. I won't. Uh. Oh, little girl. Little girl. You're gonna be just like him. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Reverend Bell need to know. Give her a crank.
Almost. Let's go. Are you all right? Yes. Before Mr. Starnes comes, do you want to say goodbye? I already did. Sleep long as you can. Lena. Lena, what can I say? You know all the words already. What's Winslow Starnes doing here? Mary Tom brought him out. He flagged her down as uh, she was passing him on his way to school. He'd uh, heard from his father what happened and uh, wanted to come out. Does his father know he's here? Not yet, but uh, he will in just a minute. gone, I need a new hand. I don't mean that there can be as good a hand as Ben, but you people always have a brother or a cousin or an uncle. Don't you have anybody back there that could make me a good hand? Sisters, uh... Well, maybe I can squeeze enough work out of those Haney's to get the crop in and get me a new hand by spring. I thought the Haney's were moving. Moving? I was throwing them off. I hear you don't know anything that happened. Do you know I can't help you if you won't speak up? You people make me so tired. But then I probably couldn't help anyway. That shoddy old coot I had the boundary dispute with, if he sent somebody over to scare off my man, He's already plenty sure I can't prove it. So, what are you going to do? Hmm? Well, what are you going to do? Rent's paid up till first of the year. Claudia, you can go back to Scatter Creek if you want. I'll go. This is where your daddy brought you to have a chance. And this is where we're gonna stay. Right here. I can wash and iron and work any job. So can Lena. We know how to earn our keep. And we know how to knuckle to you. Only we intend to work and knuckle the way we choose to and where we choose to. I got a son coming up. Be the same threat to all y'all the way Ben was. I hope you're ready for him. I'm gonna have him ready for you. Amen. Boy, get yourself over here this minute.
Just what in the juice are you doing here? If you don't get yourself right back to school, you'll feel my belt across your backside right here and now. I'm gonna stay here in case there's anything I can do. Right now, we're gonna go for a walk. We have things to talk about. Winslow? Winslow, get back here! I'll uh, stop by the school and tell Mr. Dones. Let the boy be Randolph. All I'm getting is one broken down plow for all of this. I'll go bankrupt dealing with these people. Then catch a good plow. Worth two of your funerals and you know it. It covers everything, Stans. Everything. 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 Get out of my way. Till tomorrow, Miss Lena. Services be at the cemetery at 11. things to say to each other. Sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto After himself. After the contest at school, your daddy Amen. said he's afraid you didn't know how much he loved you because he always so busy. things, no things. Use your talent, pull yourself out. I want you to believe you can do anything. The world is full of wonders and miracles, Neil. Cotton. 